Director Pinkham. Thank you all for coming here tonight. Um, <coughs> Katsiao Tatskalawit and Tatsapain, a uh, new Nest Purse word I, I learned or phrase that's uh, welcome you all for coming here. I can even hear my voice still shaking. Uh, thank you all for coming and sharing your, <coughs> your words. I'll start with. Um, the Rosh Hashanah, you know, anytime we do, you know, thank you for the points that <clears throat> we have a system that acknowledges maybe our favors one group over another. And yes, many children don't have to worry about, oh, do I have to go to sc school on Christmas? No. But the system's already kind of set up that you get the holiday break, although now they do call it a holiday break. We can't call it Christmas break anymore. So there's been some changes that had to happen. Changes always happen, I think we do, to make sure that we acknowledge all our cultures and <clears throat> traditions that represent what makes America great. Um, so what can we do to change the start of kindergarten this year? Can we change it to the Tuesday? Can we change it to the Wednesday after Rosh Hashanah ends? Uh, one of the things that they asked here, pr provide solutions. So if we don't start on the Monday, would Tuesday be okay? Or would Wednesday be optimum? You know, so what solutions do we have um, to help address those needs? You know, I remember I went to a public school on the Yakima Indian Reservation, and it was definitely a lot different than the Seattle School District. We had you know, just one high school. So we didn't have to worry about, ooh, do we have a native focus or support at this high school but not another? No, we only had one high school, and so we had a native uh, educated there, the JOM, Johnson O'Malley program, a counselor there to help us out. But now we're here in a huge, I'm here living, bring my children up in a huge school district where there's what, 11, nine high schools? <laughs> and we got Shikwachi about uh, Chief Self that helps out, and thank you for sharing that poem. But then we don't have it at other schools, so some of our native students are missing out. So, as uh, <coughs> our elder Kay Fiddler shared, you know, hey, yes, yeah, that's doing great for the students there, and her, her own children benefit from Indian Heritage High School, but it doesn't necessarily could be for all of them. But when we don't have those services in all our schools, I hope we can open an option school that allows students to choose to go there. <clears throat> so as we go through some of the agenda items tonight, I may speak up some more. Katsi Ayo, thank you. I will speak up some more. Thank you. Um, these are very painful conversations. These are the conversations that linger far past a meeting that, that are very heavy, that are very frustrating. It is beyond ironic that when we look at a situation, we get several different tangents of information coming in and it's very difficult to sift that and to take our responsibilities as seriously as we have to do so. Um, and, and the theme is indeed one of respect and equity and sensitivity. And yeah, we need to do better. There is no question about it. I think we've made some progress. I like the ideas that we heard this evening. With respect to Rosh Hashanah, it's my understanding that the start of kindergarten is part of the collective bargaining agreement and that won't be changed this year, but we heartily... Have you even asked? It's my understanding have you we... Even asked it is, excuse me. Have it is my understanding that we have. Okay. 
I appreciate the frustration more than you know. Can we do better? Yes, we can. I want absolutely to accept the offer for assistance in our scheduling, and I might add that accepting that offer and the folks that come with it to our community engagement standing committee makes a whole lot of sense to me. I see synchronicity there so that we don't make these mistakes again. And, and I appreciate the heartfelt and very deep emotion that comes with this. We are not perfect. We are striving to do better. I had a question or two from a pragmatic standpoint. I heard the amount $1.5 million to open up Indian Heritage High School. And if folks that testified to that could send emails to us to tell us what that means, tell us what the vision is. The, the pragmatic aspect of the fact is we are underfunded by a mile. McCleary is, in fact, fake news. Two years from now, unless we get relief from the legislature, we will be riffing people, not creating new programs. And with all due respect, we are not doing right by the programs that we have in place now. And these are going to be terribly tough times. So obviously, $1.5 million, there's thought behind it. Let us know what that is. Creative solutions are welcomed. But we got to figure out a way to move forward together. I love the idea of working together to figure out better ways to get where we need to be. Because I think everybody agrees we need to be in a better place. Again, thank you very much for coming down. It's painful to hear what we've heard, but we very much appreciate it, and we do hear you. On that note, we will move to action items on the agenda. We have 15 action items this evening and no introduction items, and the time check is 7 p.m. Number one. Setting the 2018-19 Economic Stabilization Account. This came before the Audit and Finance Committee June 11th for approval. Approval of this item would set the Economic Stabilization Account at 3.27% of the 2016-17 General Fund expenditures for the 2018-19 budget. May I hear the motion, please, sir? I move that the school board approve the 2018... Mm. Wrong motion. Um. Okay, I move that the school... Hold up. Could I have a copy of the motion, please? I move that the board approve an economic stabilization account balance of 3.27% of general fund expenditures from the 2016-17 school year when developing the 2018-19 fiscal year budget. Second to the motion, sir? I second motion. Okay. Do a, this came before intro. We've had budget discussions at some length in our work sessions. Do we have comments, questions, concerns from my colleagues? Seeing none, roll call, please. Director Burke? Aye. Director DeWolf? Aye. Director Mack? Aye. Director Patu? Aye. Director Pinkham? Aye. Director Harris? Aye. This motion has passed unanimously. Thank you. Number two, resolution 2017-18-18, fixing and adopting the 2018-19 budget. This came before ANF June 11th for consideration. 
Approval of this item would adopt resolution 2017-18-18 to fix and adopt the 2018-19 budget, the four-year budget plan summary, and the four-year enrollment projections. Do I have a second? I got a motion for you. Oh. I got Busted. you here. Busted. Please do, sir. I move that the school board adopt resolution 2017-18-18 to fix and adopt the 2018-19 budget, the four-year budget plan summary, and the four-year enrollment projections. I second the motion. Thank you. Comments, questions, concerns from my colleagues? Director Kankum, please, and then Director Mack. So here's where I said I would speak up. Uh, given that we do have people that are asking for additional funds from general funds to be dedicated to and some are saying yes, uh, a negative focus school, but my question is for the budget people here, within our current budget now, if Director or President Harris asks them to send some more information, would we be able to accommodate that $1.5 million at a later date? If the board decided to go in that direction. Assistant Superintendent for Budget and Finance, Berge, please. Jolyn Berge. Uh, the board could change what you've decided to spend money on for 1819. You could reduce the surplus that we currently have generated, and that would be a one-time surplus. Um, we're projected to be in deficit situation after 1819, and I would concur with Director Harris's remarks that unless something changes, we can't continue the same program that we currently have um, going into 1819 in out years. Director Pinkham, did you wish to uh, continue? Well, yeah, so I guess my, my comment would be that so if we if the board did decide we're not going to like break us next year and possibly that this wouldn't could at least just be some seed money and not make us commit to another year until we actually, like I said, we're planning to open up another high school uh, down the line. Uh, we I believe we have funds already on that for uh, we're looking at we need a downtown high school or something. It'd be great that we don't necessarily add to cost, but hey, we, we need that eventually. Could some of this money be directed to say, hey, let's make this new high school our native focus school? And let's use some of the money we have in surplus next year to help start planning for that. And then once the money comes in for construction, or however that's gonna go, you know, <laughs> we'd have it. But at least we'd get in motion and let the people know, yes, we heard you. We're gonna get some money to look at this. And as uh, Kay Fiddler was saying, have a community meeting, but we pay for it, you know, not, you know, so, so we'd have some kind of funds or resources to use for that for next year. Director Mack. And then Director DeWolf. Um, two things. One is the, uh, we have a surplus this year, correct? Uh, or the, in the coming year. Um, but that's, only because of the overlay of our existing operations levy. Um, and the year after that, we're gonna be capped and we will not have those dollars and we're gonna be in severe de deficit unless something major changes. And what's that number again for 2019? Is it about 30 million deficit that's projected? 42. Sorry? 42. 42 million in 2019-20 projected deficit if something doesn't change by the legislature. Um, so that's concerning in, in two years out. We seem to be okay in the coming year, but we are not in the future. Um, and uh, so I'm not, with that surplus that we have, I'm not necessarily comfortable spending it, um, except in perhaps emergency situation, but I'm, I'm, I'm curious to know, I'm, I'm trying to understand a little bit better what exactly that 1.5 million would go towards because there's the operations general fund budget and then there's the capital budget. Um, so here we are at the dais late, this conversation about 1.5 million is just starting publicly now first time even thinking of it, and I don't know what those dollars would be spent for, and I don't know that we would have enough information. A, I'd like, I'd like okay, to understand yeah. exactly what those dollars would be for, but B, 
I don't think we have enough information in order to do an amendment at this stage on the budget um, because there's too many open-ended questions. Thank you. And then Director DeWolf, and we'll swing back to Director yeah, uh, Pinkham. Something about that 1.5 million. I appreciate shares. that, but uh, Director DeWolf <coughs> is next. Thank you. I, uh, I, as, um, as a young person, I believe that people look at me like I don't know what I'm doing. And I know that we have a fiduciary responsibility. I feel really uncomfortable being put in a position where tonight we're asked to do an amendment for an unknown $1.5 million because the headline will be that we did not add or adopt an amendment to include $1.5 million for Native education when it was just given to us. I also uh, don't know. Me. I don't believe that a $1.5 million amendment has been made. I believe that Certainly. comments and questions have been made about it, and I think that it's very important that we stay very clear about that fact. Thank you. Thank you. I'm done. Director Pinkham. Yeah, so I, I believe the $1.5 million came from the previous superintendent in Ireland where he gave a broke down in his response to what he's gonna do for the native education uh, supplemental funds for next year. In that he listed, Indian Heritage High School had a $1.5 million budget. So I, I think that's where the. I, I would like to respond to that and take the chair's yeah. privilege. Okay. I do not recall that. And again, I feel extraordinarily uncomfortable getting a number without any data or information to back it up. Now this board can choose to change a budget if you have the votes and you find the money. Do I appreciate that it is delicate? Do I appreciate that it is difficult? Do I appreciate that $42 million in just a year is frightening? I most certainly do. Do I appreciate that we have broken a number of promises? When I say we, I mean the Seattle Public School District. And many of those promises were made by people that are no longer in this district and are not in this room. But we have a duty to listen and act sensitively and fiduciarily. So at this point, unless we have other questions, comments, or concerns, I'm gonna call the vote. Do we have more comments, questions, or concerns about adopting this budget? Director Burke. Um, briefly, I just want to highlight that the, the vote we're going to take, the magnitude of it, may seem diminished by the short amount of debate. And I just want to say publicly that this is a, a, a culmination of multiple work sessions, tons of work with the staff, a lot of iteration with directors, community meetings as described in the bar. And I just wanted to state that publicly so it's part of the record. And, in and, the future, and thanks staff for their work. I would like to have an aggregation of the time spent and of the linear paper that we've worked on over the last year because this district and this board have taken our budget process extraordinarily seriously and it has been the most transparent process that I have seen in my 20 years of hanging out here. Director Mack. Uh, to that point as well, the, on intro, upon introduction, we had a very complete uh, PowerPoint presentation that it contained additional data so that if any of the public are interested in actually digging that up and the budget book is uh, fully posted online, that information is publicly available. So uh, even though we're not going over it again today, um, it's there. So thank you. And with apologies for sounding perhaps defensive, I guess I'd like to reframe that in a non-pejorative way, I am really proud of us. And with that, the roll call, please. Director Burke. Aye. Director DeWolf. Aye. Director Mack. Aye. Director Patu. Aye. Director Pinkham. Aye. Director Harris. Aye. This motion has passed unanimously. Thank you. Number three, BTA three. Approval of budget increase and award contract K1308 to D Dawa IBI Group Architects.
for the John Muir Elementary School Green Energy Geothermal Wells Project. This came before OPS June 7th, 4. Consideration. Approval of this item would approve a one-time fund transfer in the amount of $1,650,000 from the BTA 3 program contingency and authorize A slash E contract K1308 in the amount of $267,099.50. I love those cents. For the John Muir Elementary School Green Energy Geothermal Wells Project, the motion please, sir. Okay, take, take a breath, folks. Um, I move that the school board approve the transfer of, from, the BTA 3 program contingency to the John Muir <coughs> Elementary School Green Energy Geothermal Wells Project budget. In addition, I move that the school board authorize the superintendent to execute A slash E contract K1308 to DOA, D-O-W-A, I-B-I Group Architects for the John Muir Elementary School Green Energy Geothermal Wells Project in the amount of $267,099.50 with any minor additions, deletions, and modifications deemed necessary by the superintendent and to take any necessary action to implement the contract. I second the motion. Comments, questions, concerns, and Mr. Best, are you going to be answering those or is Associate Superintendent Hernan, or are you doing a duel? There you go. Director Mack. Uh, I'm super excited about this um, project. Um, uh, just wondering whether or not we had added, I think, we, did we talk about adding, getting some additional information around the, the uh, life cycle savings of these um, systems. I think we talked about this on introduction, that it'd be helpful for us and the public to know that these sorts of building systems provide long-term savings in terms of staffing reductions. Um, and I don't recall whether or not that got put into the bar or um, sent to us in some form or if we agreed on where that information might show up in the future. Flip Herndon, Associate Superintendent of Operations and Facilities. I believe we talked about implementing that for future bars coming forward, um, that being able to turn that around calculation for this particular one was going to be a little bit of a challenge, but it was a, a mark that we wanted to make sure we would highlight in the background information for future bars on these projects. Other comments, questions, concerns from my colleagues? Seeing none, roll call please. Director Pinkham? Aye. Director Patu? Aye. Director Mack? Aye. Director DeWolf? Aye. Director Burke? Aye. Director Harris? Aye. This motion has passed unanimously. Number four, amend and rename policy number 2090, program evaluation and assessment to district educational research and evaluation. This came to CNI June 12th for recommendation for approval. Approval of this item would make edits to board policy 2090 program evaluation and assessment to reflect changes in the district's approach to program review and evaluation as well as remove assessment language that is covered in board policy number 2080. <laughs> Director Burke. I move that the board approve the amended and renamed pol board policy number 2090, District Educational Research and Evaluation. I second the motion. Comments, questions, concerns from my colleagues. Director Mack. Um, upon introduction, I had a few questions around the, um, the development of this policy. We, we met originally in two by twos, had some conversations, and then it went through the Curriculum and Instruction Committee, and I wasn't a part of that conversation. And the questions that I raised um, during introduction, I got answers to those just this past Monday. Um, I, um, I continue to have two major concerns around the redrafting of this policy. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty big rewrite from the policy that existed which is fine, um, but the two problems that I have with where it's landed and why I will be not supporting it tonight, even if my colleagues do end up adopting it, um, 
is that policy 2090 had a focus on program evaluation. Um, I feel as if that's something in our district that's really challenging and continues to be challenging because we have lots of different programs with lots of different names and we don't evaluate what works and what doesn't. Um, so not having a policy that focuses on that and shifting it instead to an educational research and evalu evaluation policy is a very different focus. Um, so I have, a, I, have a ch I have a philosophical challenge with the change of the policy focus. And then secondly, I feel from a board oversight perspective, um, we should have um, approval of the plan that's generated each year um, and not just have uh, some input through committee. That having the actual board approve the annual plan of research and evaluation is a valuable step in our process for both oversight and transparency and, and um, so that we're all walking hand in hand on, on, on these issues. Um, and uh, so those are my two kind of major issues with, with the policy as it's written um, and why I cannot support it tonight. And um, I'm not going to uh, suggest an amendment from the floor. I feel as if I'm potentially too late, um, uh, but I would, uh, I would have liked to actually pull this back and have it um, uh, adjusted a bit before it came to the full board tonight. Director Burke. Um, let me share my gratitude for the conversations we've had around this because I think it's helped me go a little deeper into the policy work than we actually did in committee. Um, the two points you brought up, uh, I want to really try to focus on the first one because I think there, we talked about that a lot in committee, that the previous policy was a program evaluation policy. And the concern was, well, what do we call a program? Once we say it's a program evaluation policy, then by definition, anything that is a program is evaluated. Anything that doesn't fit in the program bucket isn't evaluated or may not be evaluated or there's ambiguity. And so the policy doesn't exclude program evaluation, but it actually includes a broader sense, you know, the, uh, as it says here, um, rigorous research and evaluation focused on its educational programs, services, and initiatives. So the understanding that we're don't, we don't want to just evaluate our programs, we want to evaluate the efficacy of our SMART goals. We want to evaluate specific strategies that we might identify as a district, something we want to invest money in. Are we seeing a return on that? Are we seeing the results that we would want? So I just wanted to clarify that the, the change in title and the loss of the word program isn't actually a loss. It's that it's been incorporated into a larger thing, um, which it, it is a fundamental change. So I just want to be really clear about that. Can you Other questions, comments, concerns from my colleagues? I Can I? Director Batu, please. I guess I want to ask um, Director Burke, when you say a fundamental thing, what, in other words, what does that really mean? Um, I guess a lot, the, the thing that I see as the most fundamental around it is that previously the policy was structured that things that we called programs would go through a, an evaluation cycle. Um, and then there was an annual report on how, that how well that worked out. Um, the revised policy has uh, a more explicit planning period where whether it's something that we call a program, you know, whether it's highly capable, advanced learning, dual language, something that could be a, a titled program or something like a SMART goal or, um, you know, a, um, an initiative to, to start up a new school or to do a CTE course or, you know, a CTE pathway or any type of initiative that we might have. Um, the research and evaluation team would work with the board to identify what are we doing in the next year? What is important to the district, to our budget, to directors? And that would become sort of their work plan. So I think that's the, the, the biggest shift is that as compared to just identifying programs, it's uh, a, a more deliberate strategic alignment. Director Burke, I have a follow-up question to that if I might. Okay. Thank you. I'm not trying to play gotcha. I'm really trying to understand. Go for okay? it. Okay. 
you say that um, Department of Research and Eval will work with the board. Who has the authority if it doesn't say board approval in the plan? The um, the board. Let me let me get the exact language here. What if the board and the staff disagree? <coughs> well, he's looking. May I direct a question to you, sir? Yes. Associate Superintendent Tolley. Would the staff object to adding board approval into this policy? We wouldn't ob object. In the work plans? But uh, we did go through quite a bit of discussion as to whether or not that would be uh, most appropriate or not. Um, as you may have noticed in the um, superintendent procedure, it does call for uh, working with the CNI policy committee of the board to develop and uh, what the plan would look con contain in terms of what programs or services or initiatives would be evaluated. It also allows for a, a board work session of the entire board to inform the plan. So we did put structures in place to allow for a lot of uh, partnering with, uh, between staff and board members to ensure that we develop a plan that it's mutually agreed upon. Okay, and I'll just. May I finish my sentence yeah. first? Not a problem. <laughs> and then I'll toss the baton to you, and then I believe Director DeWolf wanted to speak next. Um, one of my personal goals this next year is to sort out superintendent procedures, make things as clear as humanly possible so we really do collaborate and we rebuild trust that I think is missing. Mm -hmm. Just putting that right out there, Superintendent Juno, and then Director DeWolf. Well, Madam President, I think we would all agree in this room that we really do need to work on some of those streamlining and talking about uh, the issues, which is where I think all of these issues are going. You know, when I talk about this specific policy approval, um, you know, it's been in process for about two years now. It's been through committee a lot. It's been through two by twos. It's been, oh, so it's had this process that's the usual board process it's gone through. When I look at this as well, I guess I'm concerned about not slowing things down when it's necessary and when I look at the research and evaluations that's going to go on it's going to be in conjunction with the CNI committee it's going to be on strategic plan it's going to be on the strategic direction the smart goals all of those are going to be aligned and I believe that we you know with that alignment with the input that's going to go on I don't see how we can stray too far from any specific objective of getting the evaluation done. So uh, that's my input. Um, and any of the research and evaluation is used to measure our progress on those directions and goals that are set by the board. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Director DeWolf, please. Thank you. I just, for, for me personally, I just feel the part of the work that CNI has done on this, uh, particularly the, the long uh, time that it took and, and the two by twos and the conversations we've had in committee, I feel personally that there's a sense of distrust amongst us board members who sit on that committee and have done the work to be thoughtful about this policy because we've taken the time and sat with these questions as well. I also believe that we could, it would, it would benefit us all to trust in the central leadership of our superintendent and the staff that she has under her to create these plans. And it sounds like from your com the, what you've uh, mentioned as well, uh, Michael Tolley, uh, <laughs> trying to think, what do I say? Um, but I do think that in consultation with the board, which is how I'm reading this and, and what I've understood from our conversations in CNI, that the feedback loop and the consultation of that plan, for example, um, is not done in a silo without our, our feedback and input. So I personally feel very comfortable with where we've gone. I know that the conversations, the questions, the concerns that all of us have raised have been answered and, and have been given light. So I, I'm very comfortable with moving forward with this today. 
Director Burke and then Director Mack. I, I, want, I want to acknowledge what Director DeWolf said, but mentioned for me, it's, it's not so much about trust within the board or board to staff, although that might be a, um, an unintended consequence. I see it as, as sort of a granularity of work. You know, we have a limited amount of time. And do we and want money. And money. And so everything that we have to be thoughtful and deliberate about what we choose to put at the board level. Um, and that's why I thought this was a really interesting discussion because this is a strategic element. This is a, it's a component that bridges between, you know, governance and, um, and, and actual implementation. Um, how do we strategically evaluate our programs and services and initiatives and whatnot? Um, but the, uh, my thought is, well, we could talk about that more. We could pull it off the agenda. We could put it on ice for the next seven weeks until we have another board meeting. Um, or we could let our research and evaluation team run with this for a year or two we could build a new strategic plan, which is what we're supposed to be doing, and we could put our focus there and see where the strategic plan filters into um, research evaluation work and whether that becomes a completely different structure. Um, so that's w that was where, when we were having our conversation, I was like, I could see why we should do that. I could see why we might not want to. And then I thought, you know what? I'm, I'm comfortable with the trust that's been built and the people that are working on it that it really doesn't matter whether it's board or superintendent that has the approval at this point. It may five or 10 years in the future or five or 10 years in the past. Um, but I think that this, the district strategic structure is gonna evolve over the next couple of years to the point where I, I feel like we don't know enough about it to, to really put the pieces in place. So that was, that's my reason to wanna support this and move it forward. And then just as a quick aside, since there were some eyebrows that raised when Superintendent Juno mentioned uh, the, a couple of years of work, this has been a couple of months of work on this specific policy, but it was preceded by work last year on the assessment policy, which was pulled out of this. So the big picture has been a couple of years, but this policy has been several months, just Director full Mack. disclosure. Thank you. Yeah, and Director Burke, thank you for that clarification because my eyebrows did raise because I know this policy has not been worked on for two years. It's been the last couple months that it's been rewritten so it I, the, the actual policy itself has only had a couple of months of work while there's been pre-work around the conversations about shifting it that that's <coughs> true as well um, and and I I want to um, I want to say that I think that we do need to rebuild trust in the district um, and that this position that I have around this being a board level decision is not actually about trust. It's more about transparency and process and having an appropriate level of time to and, and input um, and where that line falls for various folks is different. And in my, um, in my mind, the line should fall on the on the side of full board approval so that we're all actually involved in that decision. Um, and at the same time, I do, we do have to have trust in our staff and ourselves to do this work and, and work collaboratively. And I do trust that going forward that those, those systems are going to improve. And we have a history of superintendent procedures being written without actually being provided to the board, um, things being in procedure that are not in policy, that are in conflict. and there's those kind of things that happened in the past, and wanting to ensure that going <coughs> forward, this is just a good, a good opportunity to have those conversations that we can make improvements around those systems and ensure that um, we're walking hand in hand and, and collaborating. Director Patu. Um, this is uh, quite interesting to me because as a long time board director and also a district employee, for many years, um, it's it's really important for the fact that sometimes um, you know we have materials that we actually give out to our schools, and yes, maybe we've done evaluation and we've actually gone through it, but a lot of times it's not always good for our students, and I know that for a fact because I used to work for the district, and and I believe that uh, it's so important for us to really 
uh, to do a great program evaluation on everything that we put out there because these are the, what the kids are learning. And if we don't believe with our hearts, hearts and say this is really going to be something for our kids to really learn from, I don't think it's fair that we put it out there like that. So it's really important that we really look at this and make those changes or to reflect what is it that if we wanted, if we were to, for our kids, how would that reflect on what we were actually putting out there? So it's, for me, it's very important. Director Burke? I, I'll be really brief with this. Something that Director Mack said, um, there, was, there was a point I wanted to share previously, and I think the way you had phrased that around full board approval um, versus full board in involvement um, really heightened for me that the way the policy has been rewritten, policy and procedure has been writ rewritten, it has been with an intent for full board involvement. And so approval as you know, does not guarantee involvement, but structuring for involvement does not require approval. So that I would rather have something proactive, you know, a approval is a reactive, it's, a f it's an end state, whereas a process which engages a broader set of stakeholders is more of a proactive process. And so I think that that is one of the elements that's been woven into it. I'm done. Okay, last but hopefully not least, um, I will be voting for this because I trust that we will revisit the issues as we go along and because I have extraordinary respect for Eric Anderson and his team. Jessica, last name please. Beaver. Beaver, thank you, Dr. Beaver. Um, Dr. Anderson, Dr. Beaver. I uh, have a short list of things I'd love for them to evaluate. And now that it is not just a program evaluation, um, I'd love to see, for instance, an evaluation of Honors for All. I'd love to see an evaluation of whether or not our students in the International Baccalaureate Program are in fact passing and whether we're not we're getting our return on investment, if you will, in terms of dropout rates, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, because I used to give Larry a hard time every week about replication. And we look at all these beautiful schools, and then we look at all the other schools that you can pretend are up there because they're on the bubble, but because we only evaluate them from one data point, the SBAC scores, they're not there. And there are some in our district that are proud of the opt-out rates because they disagree philosophically about the way we measure widgets. So I'm gonna vote for this. I look forward to the really sexy conversation about equity and program placement because that's where I think our passion lies. And that's coming up, I believe, in November. Is that correct, Mr. CNI Chair? The, what's coming up in, in November is actually performance management. So program placement is yet a different thing. They're kind of all interrelated. In, in, in other words, they're a hairball to use your vernacular. We got hairballs in the future, yes. Yeah, but, but we are going to revisit that issue in the next year, is that correct? Equity and program placement. Hmm. That is... That's, that's 2020, Paul, right? 2200. 2200. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's not on the work plan. It's not on the work plan for this year. So well, I okay. Think the, the we will have an offline conversation <laughs> about that, and I'll try and twist your arm. Okay, roll call, please. Thank you so much. Director Burke? Aye. Director DeWolf? Aye. Director Mack? No. Director Patu? No. Director Pinkham? No. Director Harris? Aye. This motion is not passed by a vote of three to three. Mr. Sirkley, if it's a tie vote, how do we handle that? So it's John Sirkley, well, Deputy General Counsel. Well, then you Council. win, pal. <laughs> uh, tie vote, then it's a non, uh, the measure does not pass by a majority of the board. Okay, thank you so much.
You're welcome to bring it back up again when you believe you have the votes. Number five, <laughs> City of Seattle, and time check here. We are at 7.40 and we are number five and we have another, if you count this one, 11 to go. City of Seattle, Families and Education Levy, FEL, and Seattle Public Schools, SPS, Personal Service Contracts, PSC for Seattle Parks and Recreation, City Year of Seattle, University Tutors of Seattle Schools, Communities and School, and Seneca Family of Agencies came before Audit and Finance June 11th for approval. Approval of this item would approve contracts with Seattle Parks and Recreation, City Year of Seattle, University Tutors of Seattle Schools, Communities and School, Schools, plural, and Seneca Family of Agencies for a total of $3,905,264, no cents, to provide family and education levy funded activities. May I hear the motion, please? I move that the board authorize the superintendent to execute contracts for a combined total of $3,905,264 with the City of Seattle's Parks and Recreation Department, $553,192. University Tutors for Seattle Schools, $867,217. Communities in Schools, $250,755. Seneca Family of Agencies, $1,161,100. And City Year, $1,073,000 for school year 2018-19 for the purpose of providing families in education levy funded or other funding source activities in selected elementary K-8 middle and high schools with any minor additions, deletions, and modifications deemed necessary by the superintendent <coughs> and to take any necessary actions to implement the contracts. I second the motion. Comments, questions, concerns from my colleagues? Director Mack. Uh, I just wanted to say that the information's in the bar about um, where these schools are and the services that are being provided, so it's really complete information, and uh, that I'm grateful for the <coughs> dollars that we have for these additional services that we get. Um, I continue to be concerned around the fact that we have kind of a donut hole situation, that we have some schools that are not getting these services that could benefit as well, um, uh, but I'm excited to vote yes. And I will wrap it up by saying how grateful I am to the City of Seattle Families and Ed Levy and how grateful for each one of these extraordinary community partners. And you're absolutely right, Director Mack, there is a donut hole and we haven't reached equity, but there's just not enough darn money. Is not. Roll call, please. Director Burke. Aye. Director Duell. Aye. Director Mack. Aye. Director Batu? Aye. Director Pink? Aye. Director Harris? Aye. This motion has passed unanimously. Number six, approval of contracts for specially designed instruction, tutoring services, and other compens compensatory education services under RFQ 02758 came before audit and finance June 11th for approval. Approval of this item would approve annual contracts generated from vendors approved through RFQ 02758, specially designed instruction, individual educational program, IEP, tutoring services, and other compensatory education services for a not to exceed total amount of $1,368,678 and no cents for the 2018-19 school year motion, please, sir. Number six. I move that the school board authorize the superintendent to execute contracts with the following agencies under RFQ 02758 specially designed instruction. Yellowwood Academy in the amount of $382,992. Brooks Powers Group in the amount of $170,000. Community Health Care Services. Community Care in the amount of $438,880. Kathleen Zanoli in the amount of $6,000. Maxim Healthcare Services in the amount of $50,925.
Reither in the amount of $244,881, and Seneca Family Agencies in the amount of $75,000 with any minor additions, deletions, and modifications deemed necessary by the superintendent and to take any necessary actions to implement these contracts. I second the motion. Questions, comments, concerns from my colleagues? Director Mack. Roll call, please. Director Mack? Aye. Director Patu? Aye. Director Pinkham? Aye. Director Burke? Aye. Director DeWolf? Aye. Director Harris? Aye. This motion has passed unanimously. And I might add that we are doing a better job of getting these contracts dialed up so that they all had a good, healthy discussion and in intro than the old days when they were intro actions. So props to the staff for putting this together and giving us the space and grace to ask our questions. Much, much appreciated. Because this is real money and most importantly, the services that this represents are significant. Number seven, approval of contracts for therapeutic day treatment service providers, RFQ 07695, came before audit and finance June 11th for consideration. Approval of this item would approve annual contracts generated from agencies, providers approved through RFQ 0695, therapeutic treatment day services for a not to exceed total amount of $1,891,703 and no cents for the 2018-19 school year based on yearly 2017-18 contract totals. Motion, please, sir. Y'all and I are just reading to each other. <laughs> Motion, I move that the school board authorize the superintendent to execute contracts with agencies approved through RFQ 05790 therapeutic, day, therapeutic Treatment Day Services for a not to exceed total amount of $1,891,703 as follows. Reither in the amount of $231,950, 3,402 hours. Overlake Hospital <coughs> Specialty School in the amount of $571,175, 7,299 hours. Fairfax Hospital slash NWSOIL in the amount of six hundred and fifty five thousand seven hundred and eighteen dollars ten thousand three hundred and fifty five hours and Seneca family of agencies in the amount of four hundred and thirty two thousand eight hundred and sixty dollars fifteen thousand three hundred and ninety three hours for private placement of students in need of therapeutic day services and programming with any minor additions deletions and modifications deemed necessary by the superintendent and to take any necessary actions to implement these contracts. I second the motion. Comments, questions, concerns from my colleagues? Point of clarification. Yes, sir. Yeah, I was curious if he's reading the right one myself. <laughs> I see. Okay. The RFQ number that was put in the motion was incorrect. I would like to amend that. Rather than RFQ 05790, it is RFQ 07695. Can you second the amendment, please, sir? I second the amendment. Okay. Comments, questions, concerns about the amendment to the motion? Seeing none. Comments, questions, concerns about the motion itself with the Scrivener's correction. Seeing none, roll call, please. Director Burke? Aye. Director DeWolf? Aye. Director Mack? Aye. Director Patu? Aye. Director Pinkham? Aye. Director Harris? Aye. This motion, as amended, has passed unanimously. Number eight, contract approval for early support for infants and toddlers, birth through three intervention service providers. Audit and finance, June 11th, four. We are at number eight, approval. Approval of this item would authorize a superintendent to execute contracts totaling $4,707,692, no cents, with the EEU, the Experimental Education Unit, Wonderland Developmental Center, Northwest Center, and Boyer Children's Clinic. 
to ensure the provision of early intervention services in accordance with Part C of the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, otherwise known as IDEA. Motion, please. I move that the school board authorize the superintendent to execute contracts with the Experimental Education Unit, EEU, in the amount of $243,501, Wonderland Developmental Center in the amount of $405,835, Northwest Center in the amount of $1,623,340, and Boyer's Children's Clinic in the amount of $2,435,016, to ensure the provision of early intervention services as defined in 34C.F.R.303 in accordance with Part C of the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, IDEA, with any minor additions, deletions, and modifications deemed necessary by the superintendent, and to take any necessary actions to implement the contracts. I second the motion. Questions, comments, concerns from my colleagues? I have a question for Chief Jesse, if I might. You may have missed me during introduction at the last board meeting. I heard you missed me. I did indeed. Uh, there you go. Okay. Um, we have talked about offering these services in-house. Where do we stand on that? Uh, for this particular service, this is birth to three highly specialized services. Um, I know you've heard from Boyer, for example, um, before. Uh, so we are not we're not currently set up to do birth to three at, at and at other nine. services on the I, I, I don't know how to put this help me out here with mm -hmm. the lingo sure. and the language please please yeah uh, many of the programs that we've offered over three years old yes for special education yep I'm thinking about the original Van Asselt, where we used to we do an used to have evaluation teams. So we have evaluation teams Thank that you. really work. No problem. Pull me we, out of this. Sure, no problem. Uh, <laughs> special ed, a um, lot of a lot of details. So that's really the part C to B. Uh, so we have an evaluation team um, that was at uh, the OVA site. It really goes in, a lot of students come, as you know, developmental disabilities, <laughs> some are gonna be up front, and other ones are found out as kids develop, and so we evaluate them and then provide them that services. Um, and so uh, these particular pr providers provide um, services um, for students um, who have uh, early on said intervention services needed. A lot of them are usually more severe, more profound, as the term we usually use in special ed. So those are identified, and then that information comes up, we partner with them, and then uh, our, uh, it makes it easier for the evaluation uh, on that side. Other students, it's not as clear, and so that's why we do our evaluation. Some kids qualify and some kids don't um, at that particular time, um, and then we continue to move forward. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions, comments, concerns? Director Patu. Um, I figure with all the contracts that we have, that's, uh, that we provide outside. It would be nice if we get to know a little bit more about each one of these contracts in terms of what we provide and what our involvement in terms of our dealing with these uh, contracts. I mean, I only read what's on here, but you know, just wanted to find out a little bit more about what is our involvement in these contracts. Let's put our heads together and, and, and have either a work session or maybe a uh, different way to share information that a field trip, if you will, because this is really important stuff to our families. On the other hand, um, this is also really sensitive yeah. and I don't want to be in a position ever of... Uh, Violation of FERPA. Violation of FERPA, but, but more importantly, the sensitivity that mm -hmm. goes with it. Mm -hmm. um, there's the rule of the law, and then there's the heart and soul. So let's, let's talk about that if I'd we could. I'd be happy to do that. Thank you. Okay. Other questions, comments, concerns? Seeing none, roll call, please. Director DeWolf. Aye. 
Director Mack? Aye. Director Patu? Aye. Director Pinkham? Aye. Director Burke? Aye. Director Harris? Aye. This motion has passed unanimously. Number nine, private schools, proportional share services, RFQ 04676, providers, Ryther, Catapult Learning, Hamlin Robinson, Spring Academy, came before audit and finance June 11th for? Approval. Approval of this item would approve contracts for services for parentally placed private school students under the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, I DEA for a total amount of $794,772 and no cents. Motion please. I move that the school board authorize the superintendent to execute contracts with Catapult Learning in the amount of $185,328, Hamlin Robinson in the amount of $185,328, Spring Academy in the amount of $391,716, and Reither in the amount of $32,400 to ensure the provision of equitable services to parentally placed private school students attending approved nonprofit private schools under the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, <coughs> IDEA, with any minor additions, deletions, modifications deemed necessary by the superintendent and to take any necessary actions to implement the contracts. I second the motion. Questions, comments, concerns from my colleagues? Seeing none, roll call up, Hello. excuse me. Director Patu, please. I really would like to learn a little bit about these. Um, you know, we vote on it on a regular basis, but I really don't know what, I mean, only read what it says on there, but I really would like to know more what our involvement is. Okay, what I would suggest then is that each of these contracts was attached to the bars in introduction and is attached to the bar here and went through audit and finance. Now, is this the best way to get our information? I would suggest perhaps not. And mm -hmm. I hope that the document system that will be uh, coming online come fall, board docs, it's not exactly board docs, it's another system that DOTS is working on that we approved um, is a better way to do that. But this is part of the same issue that we ran into on the research evaluation. We have a committee structure. We have delegated authority. As board members, you, better than anybody, after eight years, <laughs> knows how much paper we're yeah, responsible no. for. So there's a certain element of it's on us to read it if we have questions. It's on us to send those emails to the, and I hate the word business owner, so I'll say the portfolio holders, uh, the staff that is bringing forth these recommendations and or to call folks up or send them an email saying, you know, I'll meet you at the district, give me your times, I'll buy you the cup of coffee, learn me up. But I think we heard from Chief Jesse that we're going to figure out some creative ways to share information about this because this is real money, but most importantly, it's addressing really significant e needs of our kids. Director Mack. Um, the, I just, I kind of wanted to tack on to that. I think that question is, is actually highlighting the challenges of our committee structure in which more in-depth questions are asked and conversations are had, but then that information doesn't come forward. And I don't believe, in answer to your question, that's actually really complete in the bar. You can't read it. Mm -hmm. uh, we did ask those questions um, in committee around what exactly does this mean? Because why are we paying for private school kids? Yeah. And th because it, the federal law says we have to. Exactly. So, so we did ask some of those questions about why these programs exist and who they are and, and, and had some more in-depth uh, conversations there. But I, I think it does highlight challenges around, um, you know, still ha needing to have some additional information when it comes to the full board and how to resolve that. Thank you. And I think we're going to get, with this new board doc system, I think we're going to get faster turnaround of minutes of committee meetings as well, and it'll be easier to access. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at your intro items and your action items, 
easier to find the discussion and the draft minutes online. At least that's sincerely my hope, because we're spending real money and real time to make the system better. Great. Roll call, please. Director Mack? Aye. Director Pingham? Aye. Director Patu? Aye. Director Burke? Aye. Director DeWolf? Aye. Director Harris? Aye. This motion has passed unanimously. Okay, we're on number 10 of 15. Time check is 8 p.m. Approval of contracts for sign language interpreter vendors, RFQ 11641, came before audit and finance June 11th for. Approval. Approval of this item would authorize the superintendent to execute contracts with agencies, providers, approved through RFQ 11641, sign language interpreter vendors for a not to exceed total amount of $500,000 for the 2018-19 school year based on yearly 2017-18 sign language interpreter contract totals. Motion please, sir. I move that the school board authorize the superintendent to execute contracts with agencies approved through RFQ 11641 sign language interpreter ven vendor based on an average interpreter hourly rate of $78.28 per hour for a not to exceed total amount of $500,000 for all agencies governed under the RFQ with any minor additions, deletions, and modifications deemed necessary by the superintendent and to take any necessary actions to implement these contracts. I second the motion. Questions, comments, concerns from my colleagues? Seeing not, uh, excuse me, kind sir, Director Burke. Um, I'm not sure if this is something that could be addressed now, or is, uh, but we had a public testimony request around um, including on-call sign language interpreters. Um, and so this is something which would obviously have a financial impact. And I was wondering, had that been analyzed at all or has not been analyzed? And ironically, when we were going through our superintendent search, public engagement, interpreters did not show up and we were unable to make those services available um, and it was embarrassing and frustrating and distressing. And this is not the first time that's come up. It's come up several times. On-call interpreters. So I, I see the, 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 the face of question. Um, let, me, let me try to restate that and, and not completely put you on the spot. The, not to exceed amount that's called out here is basically $500,000 for all agencies combined um, for sign language interpretation. Um, presumably that's an annual budget for multiple vendors. Um, can we say historically what that has been without uh, an on-call person or, or a, an on-site person? Rather than saying on-call, I should say on-site full-time available, one of our people that may not be fully utilized but could be deployed, and is that a viable model? Well, I really appreciate that at the end, I, I started to understand exactly what, I think that question is starting to mean, Director Burke, and we do have a number of staff uh, here in the district that do sign, right? And so we have those, our two primary service uh, schools for that are Roosevelt and at Tops. So some of the challenges when somebody's not able to be there, we don't have readily backup. It's a highly skilled position, and so we have to work on having these vendors. A bulk of this contract actually is, if you'll notice on the last page, is really with one of the vendors is um, Hearing, Speech, and Deafness Center. That's actually the preschool services that we have. Um, that we contracted with. Uh, this has happened three years ago. I think it's one of the things that we should be very proud of here actually in Seattle is we've Im highly improved our DHH services. Um, and so that, that's why, I mean, they're just on site. I mean, that's a location right off Madison. So that's, that's why those folks do it. And then so we do um, just have shortages too. Sometimes we just can't fill positions and so we also have to 
um, have them help us, whether it's, again, staff members sick, on leave or anything like that, that's why those folks are there and that's why these contracts really are in place um, because they're there to support the IEPs of students with, with special education. Thank you, I'll defer to others. Director Mack, please. Um, so just for clarification, these contracts, uh, Mr. Jesse, um, the contracts are all of the um, contractors specified in the contracts, are they assigned and there's no one on call? Or is there flexibility in this contract that we are setting up a contract in which we do have on call access to these vendors? We, we absolutely, Director Mack, we have on call access to them. Again, you can't just call up like the day of and then expect someone to show up that we can't, we don't, we just can't have that level of service. I just want to be clear about it. But we do do requests um, ahead of time and so they, they show up. But just like any other employee or other vendors that we hire, there are times where people don't show up. And these two particular vendors, Sign Talk and Terp, are ones that we have historically used and obviously districts all the way around the Puget Sound also use these particular providers. So they're on call. Director Pinkham? Yeah, I, I usually catch these little things, but is that, do we have a redundancy in this recommended motion or do we pay the interpreters for by hour? There is no half hour. You know, if they only work three and a half hours, we we pay them because it says hourly rate of seven eight eight dollars and twenty eight cents or twenty cents per hour. That seems redundant, but then also couldn't re be redundant if we're saying we got to pay them for full hours. We don't give them half hours. Uh, yeah, Thank you. Yeah, language in the motion. Um, based on the average interpreter hourly rate of seventy eight dollars and twenty cents per hour. It's, a, it's either a typo or a grammatical issue. And if it's not a typo and that's meant, that's what I'm asking, do we have to pay them for full hours? So if they went one hour and five minutes, we actually have to pay them two hours? <laughs> I'll, have to get back, I'll have to get back to you on that. I don't know that technical answer. Is it a big enough deal to you to move to table this? And if so, do we ask Chief Jesse what the ramifications of such a motion would be? And a motion to table is non-debatable. Yeah, yeah. for me, I guess it's it still, we wouldn't exceed the $500,000. That's the main part of it. But for me, it just clarification. Yeah, yeah it's, it's only for ser services rendered. So there's not, we're not doing anything different than other than what they would provide if they were there for six hours for a day or eight hours a day, they're gonna get paid for that. This is standard contract language. So it, it's operationalized in the, in the contract. There's probably some agreement on the invoice as to whether it's, it's unusual for it to be less than by the half hour, let me say that. Yeah. So hourly language. rate of so many hours per hour, that's, that's right. typical language? Yep. Okay. And then they bill in increments, is that correct? Yeah. Okay then. Roll call please. Director Patu? Yes. Director Pinkham? Aye. Director Burke? Aye. Director DeWolf? Aye. Director Mack? Aye. Director Harris? Aye. This motion has passed unanimously. Number 11, University of Washington Experimental Education Unit, the EEU Interagency Agreement to provide educational services to special education students ages three through six. This came before audit and finance June 11th for consideration. For consideration, thank you. Approval of this item would provide special education services for up to 48 preschoolers and 15 kindergartners as well as technical support for four schools for inclusion practices for students with special needs during the 2018-19 school year. These interagency agreements total $1,329,180. Motion please, sir. 
I move that the school board authorize the superintendent to execute interagency agreement with the University of Washington Herring Center in the amount of $1,329,180 <coughs> for the following services. Educational services for up to 48 preschool students, including extended day services for up to 24 students, delivered by the EU in the amount of $880,800. Educational services for up to 15 kindergarten students delivered by the EEU in the amount of $366,478. And technical support and training to staff and services to students in identified classrooms within Seattle Public Schools to be provided by the Professional Development Unit in the amount of $81,902. The services are to be provided in accordance with the draft agreement dated May 24th, 2018 and attached to the school board action report with any minor additions, deletions, and modifications deemed necessary by the superintendent. I further move that the school board authorize the superintendent to take any necessary actions to implement the contract. I second the motion. Comments, questions, concerns from my colleagues? Director Burke. Just to say thank you, and we've come a long way in the discussion around EU and collaboration, and I, I just remember my first year on the board, I was like, wow, this no, is a No, that big would be your first month on the board when all first, hell broke First loose. board meeting, this was, a, this, was a, this was in the hot topic category and now it's in the success category and collaboration wins. So thank you for that. And Superintendent Juno, um, you want a field trip as soon as possible. This is an amazing place and the partnership is a good one and an exciting one and uh, we almost lost it. Roll call, please. Director DeWolf? Aye. Director Pinkham? Aye. Director Mack? Aye. Director Patu? Aye. Director Burke? Aye. Director Harris? Aye. This motion has passed unanimously. Number 12, Athletic Trainer Support Services Contracts. Contract, singular, ops, June 7th, 4. Consideration. Approval of this item would authorize the superintendent to execute a personal service contract with Seattle Children's Hospital in the amount of $346,000 for the first one-year term. The contract may be extended on an annual basis up to two additional one-year terms to include 11 high schools in the amount of $380,600. Either party may terminate this agreement at any time upon 30 days written notice total expenditure not to exceed $1,107,200 in no cents. Motion, please. I move that the school board authorize the superintendent to execute a personal service contract with Seattle Children's Hospital in the amount of $346,000 for the first one-year term. The contract may be extended on an annual basis up to two additional one-year terms to include 11 high schools in the amount of $380,600. Either party may terminate this agreement at any time upon 30 days written notice. Total expenditure not to exceed $1,107,200. I second the motion. Comments, questions, concerns? I haven't forgotten that I want club sports in this given lacrosse and uh, ultimate, but that's a conversation downstream. Haven't forgotten also, Associate Superintendent Herndon, that you and Dr. Herring are gonna work together for some exciting stuff for our students. That's correct. Okay, roll call please. Director Burke? Aye. Director DeWolf? Aye. Dr. Mack? Aye. Dr. Patu? Aye. Dr. Pinkham? Aye. Dr. Harris? Aye. This motion has passed unanimously. 13, approve purchase of technology to support the career and technical education, CTE program. Approval of this item would allow the purchase of new computers and carts for a not to exceed amount of $800,000. Motion please, sir. I move that the school board authorizes, oh, edits, let me go, the, hang on. I move that the school board authorize the superintendent to execute purchase orders through RFP number 06792 with Dell Thornburg for a not to exceed amount of $550,000 and through the sole source contract with Apple Computers for a not to exceed amount of $250,000 plus Washington State sales tax over fiscal years 2017, 2018 summarized in the list of projected orders attached to the board action report with any minor additions, deletions, and modifications deemed necessary by the superintendent. 
I second the motion. Comments, questions, concerns? Director Burke, you had a number of concerns during intro. Were those issues addressed, sir? Um, yes, uh, I had a great conversation with, uh, with Caleb Perkins and he clarified for me and for the rest of the directors um, through email that while this bar represents a um, adoption of um, large technology items, it's really the two grants that go above our uh, board approval threshold. And so there are a whole series of regular purchases that come out of budgets to support consumables and other elements of their CTE programs. That information has been attached to the bar just as a reference. So um, the, the concern that I had had, potentially a knee-jerk concern of, wow, did we just go out and say, do you want la desktops or laptops? Do you want Macs or PCs? Um, there was a much more thoughtful engagement process around what does your program need? What type of technology do you need? And that included the hardware, but it also included a whole s host of smaller things that are referenced here. Thank you. Director Mack, did you have something to ask, add, <coughs> question? Yeah, uh, I appreciate this, that this additional information has been added since introduction. I didn't get a chance to look at it until now. And it raised a question for me um, because it, what I'm seeing here is a list of uh, existing computer systems that were purchased back in 2012 or whatever. I'm looking at them in specific and I believe that the, what I had heard was that the computers for the yearbook program at Ballard High School were actually paid for by private funds, not district funds and not levy funds, not something that, you know, it was, it was actually a, a grant program that came. So, this raises a question to me of where funds typically are coming from to pay for these things and how those decisions are being made. Um, May I respond? Yeah. Okay. Um, respectfully. Pointing that out tonight when we have to purchase this stuff on, I'm, I'm, I'm just finishing up here. This came potentially for intro and action when Is it Dr. Perkins or Mr. Perkins? Dr. Perkins, director of CTE, uh, asked for permission to bring it forward for intro and action at the same time because of that timeline ramping up to start of schools. Um, graciously held it back, addressed questions, et cetera. Um, I would agree with you that if, if if we didn't have anything else to do but this job all day, every day, we would catch things like Ballard High School paying for or their PTA or their booster club or their o o over $4 million in this district is on the backs of PTSAs and boosters, right? But we need to get this ordered to address it, but I think it's totally appropriate to ask questions about that and at DOTS and the Information Technology Advisory Committee, I think is gonna be addressing some of the computer buy-in, what for, et cetera, and what our inventory is. Is that a fair comment, Director Burke? I, I can't speak to that specifically, but I know that, um, and I also can't speak whether this is the case in this particular scenario, um, and maybe um, Jillian Berge is, is familiar with this, but. It's not uncommon for um, PTA or outside funded purchases to be bundled through uh, district procurement so that we can get the better discount and, and have standardized equipment. So that might be the case that that money might have been accepted as a, as a grant below our threshold and, and included in this. So I think that would just be a clarification to follow up on. And, and to clarify that, th that I, I, I am fully in support of, of this purchase order that these dollars have been dedicated and they, it's appropriate, et cetera, and that, that it looks like the research in terms of the need uh, for which computers need to be replaced has been appropriately done. I have no questions there. It just continues to raise the question for me of um, our budgeting 
and um, where dollars are coming from and where they're going to, and that um, as we improve our processes around those, I'm happy, so. Other questions, comments, concerns? Director Burke, roll call, please. Director Burke? Aye. Director DeWolf? Aye. Director Pinkham? Aye. Director Patu? Aye. Director Mack? Aye. Director Harris? Aye. This motion is passed unanimously. Number 14, approval of a settlement agreement with Lydic Construction, Inc. and Elcon Corporation, Inc. regarding the Cascadia Elementary, Licton Springs, K-8, and Robert Eagle Staff Staff, Robert Eagle Staff Middle Schools Project. Approval of this item would approve the settlement agreement with Lydig Construction, Inc. and Elcon Corporation, Inc. in the form attached to the board action report with any minor additions, deletions, and modifications deemed necessary by the superintendent and to take any necessary actions to implement the agreement, including payment in the amount of $556,275.50. This item is for intro and action and associate superintendent is at the podium and deputy general counsel John Sirkwe is standing by to answer any questions uh, this board met in executive session with uh, litigation and, and that's the committee it came through. Questions, comments, concerns, sir? Motion. Is there, you have a motion to read? I have a motion I'm to read. I'm surprised, go for it, thank you. I move that the school board approve the settlement agreement with Leidig Construction Inc. and Elcon Corporation Inc. in the form attached to the board action report with any minor additions, deletions, and modifications deemed necessary by the superintendent and to take any necessary action to implement the agreement including payment in the amount of $556,275 and dollars and 50 cents. Immediate action is in the best interest of the district. I second the motion. Because this is intro and action, we have not had an opportunity to discuss this publicly. Can you give us the short version, understanding that this is a lot of money, but it's 820? Yes. Thank I you, can. sir. Um, as you've probably read from the background, the basis for this particular motion is to come to an agreement on a settlement reached with Elcon, which is one of our subcontractors. Uh, electronic um, electrical subcontractor for the project at Robert Eagle Staff Lichten Springs K-8 school. Um, during the process of that construction project, there were some delay claims that were made by the subcontractor. Um, they filed a, a much larger claim and through the mediation process, we were able to bring this um, particular dollar value down to the to what you see in front of you. That's a combination not only of the claim, but there were also, there was some uh, change order dollars associated with that as well. So this is the combination of both the claim and the change orders associated with this particular subcontractor. Deputy General Counsel Sirkwe, is it appropriate for you to tell us how much the ask was? Um, so, John Sirkwe, Deputy General Counsel, usually uh, mediations, the parties sign confidentiality agreements, so it would be in breach of the confidentiality agreement. I did not participate in the mediation, but those who did would sign. This was file litigation, wasn't it? Uh, the litigation was, but as far as the mediation. I, I understand don't have, that. What I don't I'm have asking the claim is, document. I don't did, know the claim did document they have number. a claim number in publicly filed litigation? I'm really proud of the... So it's actually Thoughtful, listed. Thoughtful, forthright yep. action, mediating this, minimizing our risk, capping any future damages from this company in different schools, et cetera. So Director Hurden found that it is listed in uh, the recitals for you, and it's the ask was $5.75 million. And you're asking us to approve how much? Again, the grand total of the settlement and the change orders was 500 and 
$56,275.50. Thank you. Questions, comments, concerns? Way to go. Thank our attorney as well. He presented to the board. He answered tough questions, and he was within $10 of the question on the fee and the expert witnesses, which is, in my world, which is litigation, amazing. Roll call, please. Director Patu? Aye. Director Pinkham? Aye. Director Mack? Aye. Director Dewell? Aye. Director Burke? Aye. Director Harris? Aye. This motion has passed unanimously. Number 15, last item, time check is 825. Approval of successor a collective bargaining agreement between Seattle School District Number 1 and the International Brotherhood of Teamsters Local Union Number 174 for September 1, 2017 through August 31, 2020. Approval of this item would authorize the superintendent to execute the collective bargaining agreement with the International Union of Teamsters Local 174 with the wage schedules and other attachments in the form of the draft agreement for the period September 1, 2017 through August 31, 2020 as attached to the school board action report with any minor additions, deletions, and modifications deemed necessary by the superintendent and to take any necessary actions to implement the contracts. Immediate action is in the best interest of the district. This item is for intro and action and was brought before the board, and I believe in closed session, and explained to us. Is that correct, madam? Motion, please. I move that the school board authorize the superintendent to ex execute the collective bargaining agreement with the International Union of Teamsters Local Number 174 with the wage schedules and other attachments in the form of the draft agreement for the period of September 1, 2017 through August 31st, 2020 as attached to the school board action report with any minor additions, deletions, and modifications deemed necessary by the superintendent and to take any necessary actions to implement the contracts. Immediate action is in the best interest of the district. I second the motion. Questions, comments, concerns from my colleagues? Can you give us a short version of why we're doing this because we did not have intro in this and it would make sense on the public record? Yes, Joel Lindbergh, Assistant Superintendent for Business and Finance. So it's Teamsters Local 174 represent the district's 14 drivers who make deliveries to the school buildings and work sites every day. This is a three-year agreement covering school years 1718, 1819, and 1920. The bargaining unit employees are provided a 3% increase in pay retroactive to September 1, 2017. On September 1, 2018 and 2019, the employees will be given an additional 3% increase or the increase in the consumer price index provided by state law, whichever is greater. The cumulative total cost of the wage increase at the 3% minimum is estimated to equal $238,036. There were no other provisions with cost impacts or other substantive changes to this bargaining agreement. That would conclude my remarks. Do you have a formal motion to read or did she just do that? Okay. Full call, please. Not seeing anyone wanting to make questions, comments, or concerns known. Director Burke? Aye. Director DeWolf? Aye. Director Mack? Aye. Director Patu? Aye. Director Pinkham? Aye. Director Harris? Aye. This motion has passed unanimously. Okay, one thing for the record before we adjourn, so stay put please for a moment. Um, it may appear to the public that we have fewer staff people in the room presenting on issues. One of the first things that Superintendent Juno has done is ask the cabinet level staff present and let their hardworking staff go home. I'm assuming that was the reason. Okay, so things are changing. And this meeting is adjourned at 8.28. Thank you all very, very much. Appreciate.